Hey, all you future Forexers out there, thanks for joining me once again on Forex Formula Radio. Have you experienced the feeling of being out of control, out of balance? Have you ever felt that you need to act like a mother hen and hatch your listings or experience that, that insecurity that your clients would hop on over to work with another agent if you weren't totally on top of things? Have you ever felt that you only feel a sense of security and control if you're only thinking about real estate and nothing else? Have you ever experienced tension with your loved ones when it comes to choices made with your time? If not now, it will happen at some point in your business building. There's this tension that goes on inside you. I understand it. I, I still struggle with it too. And if you're at all ambitious in any way, if you have this burning desire to succeed, if you're listening today, I think that you must be that kind of person. So you will relate to what we talk about today. How do you achieve that perfect life work balance as a real estate professional. That's what we're going to talk about. Hi, I'm Kelly Johnston, founder of the Forex Formula. And the big question is this, how are real estate agents like us able to create a constant stream of commissions and a constant stream of leads while enjoying life without wasting big budgets on branding, without working crazy hours, without worrying where the next deal's coming from in today's real estate market? This podcast is here to reveal the answers. I remember the days when I would spend considerable amounts of time on activities that weren't really fruitful. I wasted a lot of time on activities that I now consider C activities. There are A, B, C, and D activities in real estate when it comes to building your business. Don't get me wrong. If your time's not consumed with A and B activities, then you have to do C activities to get the ball rolling. But I found that I would spend time on fruitless activities just for the sake of it. It was time consuming, but I thought that it was a good investment of time to eventually get business. Or I rationalized that I was doing something, which is better than nothing, right? And the problem is that I was not taught anything. I had no mentors around me. I had nobody close to me that I could rely upon to kind of help me figure it out. And I believe that this happens a lot. So we end up doing D activities by default just for the sake of doing something. D activities are a waste of time in my opinion. That's what a D activity is. Advice is tough to come by in the real estate world unless you pay good money for coaching. But in, in the general real estate world, I think there's three ways to receive advice if you seek it out. So here's how advice happens in real estate as I see it. The office mentor, okay? So this person uh, a lot of times has been in the business over 10 to 15 years and is now kind of resigned to be the trainer in the office. And they teach a few tactics and I'm not putting them down. They are, the, but most likely a lot of times they're the same ones that everybody teaches and usually from the old school kind of ways of doing things. And I found, I found that it's very salesy a lot of times. I've heard so many different things, so many different trainers from phoning 100 people a day to knocking on doors to having phone call nights and cold call nights and, and, uh, and you're knocking on doors all day long to get one maybe. And I've, believe me, I think that's a D activity. I've heard that there are some companies that recruit based on their tricky little lead generation campaigns and, and there's no system though. There's no formula. So then they become C and D activities. And they may talk about hitting up FISBOs and expired listings. Yeah, that's great. But again, no system in place. So the second way is learning from the top dog, right? The top person in the office or, or a highly successful person. So they're in the office and, and there's always somebody in the office who's very successful. It's someone that most people actually a lot of times are intimidated by. They're usually very busy. They have limited time to speak to people, especially if they're successful. And then and you, when you finally get up the gumption to ask this person to lunch and ask them how to succeed, it could be a motivating lunch, but truly in the end, they most likely will only be able to intellectually explain one thing. It most likely will be the thing that they're really good at, right? And this is normal. This is, this is not to be criticized. I relate to that because I remember talking to people and thinking to myself, Okay, I want to give this person some pearls of wisdom, but I, I don't want to give away, one, the secret sauce, right? Or I would think to myself, I can't really vocalize how to operate a successful business in like an hour. It's impossible. So uh, what's that one thing that I think is going to be really impactful? And I would talk about that. So this person, 
you see what I mean? So this person's kind of looking for information that's kind of in the middle of the alphabet, like at M or something. And they, and they really need to get A to D set up first, really, before they even consider M. You know, you know what I mean? But the problem with that, with A to D, is it's not really sexy. It's not really exciting. It's kind of like, oh, gosh, I don't really want to focus on that. I want, to, I want the big hit, right? Does that make sense? It's really challenging. So unless an office has a full A to Z program, they don't really have a training program. Everyone's really left to figure it out. And the office is simply interested in ensuring that you just pay your bills on time every month. So this is more often the reality in the real estate business. And that's okay. It's just the way it is. And I'm not putting it down. A lot of people can succeed in that environment, but a lot of people kind of falter. And that's the whole reason I'm doing this. So with that in mind, part of the problem with the work-life balance is due to simply just not knowing what to do. Would you, would you agree with me on that? So number three, here's the third way, is you pay for a full training program of some kind to fine-tune your efforts. And there's really no way around it. If, if you want to succeed in this business and have some chance of achieving a balanced life at some point, then you need to invest in training. This will save you hours and days and months of aggravation and save you a lot more money than the money you spend on the training for sure. It's an investment that will pay dividends. So you need to know this. I'm a huge advocate of this, not just because I sell a training course. If it's not my course, somebody's course. Do something. Pay for something. First thing you need to get is is to get properly trained on the activities that you need to focus on and how to do it properly with the right tools to maximize your time output. That's the first thing that you need to do. There are various ways to obtain the proper training, right? Take a course, go to a seminar, watch webinars, get a coach, watch YouTube, read some books, listen to podcasts. Like there's lots of ways to get information and consume it today. It's like going to a grocery store and kind of, you know, choosing what you want down the aisle. There's a lot of information out there right now, but you need to find the right fit that will work for you. So knowing what to do with your time is half the battle, right? So this is one of the most common issues that real estate agents face. But I find that a lot of real estate agents looking for info tend to, they kind of go down the chip and pop aisle, you know, and they spend time there. They want what tastes good, kind of satisfies the craving. Do you get my meaning? It, and, and it's tasty and easy to consume, but not really good for you in the long run. There's no silver bullet. There's no quick get rich plan or simple game changing solution to make all the difference in your business. It's always a combination of many things all put together. Understand this. Like really, please save yourself the money and time and effort and, and all that. Like save it. Don't look for the shortcut. Will it make it easier for me? Kind of training. Go through the produce section. Salads are better for you, but they take a little preparation, right? Combining different kinds of produce and fruit to make healthy dishes are better for you, right? But it's rarely one ingredient that makes a great salad. Sometimes I'll have to put seven to 10 different types of ingredients into a salad and it's awesome and it's satisfying and and actually quite filling. And But you know what? I don't enjoy eating one type of lettuce in a bowl and nothing else. It's the combination of things that makes it enjoyable and achieves the balance for my body. Does that make sense? But it takes preparation. It takes a little bit of work. I got to cut things up. I got to buy a bunch of different things. Consuming the right training inf- and information that gives you a specific plan with action steps and tools to, to ensure the proper standards and creates a positive outcome along the way is the way to go and will be pivotal in creating the dream real estate business. Here's the reality. It does take time to get the ball rolling. It takes time to get the systems in place. It takes time. I mean, I mean the investment of time to record things and keep good records. It takes time to ensure that all your clients' care touch systems are in place, your after-sale follow-up stuff, building relationships with strategic alliances. Those are all investments that produce dividends in the future, but it doesn't feel like you're making money for doing it at the time. But nothing happens overnight. Just because you aren't doing up listing paperwork or working on contracts to purchase or working on CMAs doesn't mean you have nothing to do. And this is the trap that a lot of realtors fall into. Also, keep in mind that even if you have all those things to work on in a day, you'll, you still have to do those items. Like the, the People think that when they're, they're busy with the busyness or business of today, 
that that fulfills their business activities. But it's not true. You have to build your business for tomorrow and next year while doing today's business. There's never nothing to do. If your days and weeks are spent on A and B activities, which are fruitful and money-making, and you have momentum in your business, then you're in control. That's where you want to get to. So while more time and energy and focus may have to be in place in the beginning for the first little bit, and all of that time and energy is put into the right areas of your business, then you eventually will be able to create a healthy and fruitful balance. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So what I'm saying is, number two, you're going to have to be totally out of balance first before getting balance. You got to earn the right to have balance. Does that make sense? Or does that confuse you? (laughs) You know, okay, if you think about the building of a brick home for a second, Okay, so first there has to be a foundation put in place to support the heavy brick walls. And that's going to have to be well planned out. We actually have to have a whole foundation section of our course that we do before getting into the how-tos. The reason for this is that it's not worth setting out on a journey unless you know where you're going. You need to see the landmarks along the way to be sure that you're on the right path, right? Does that make sense? Your foundation will support everything. It has to. And then it's going to give you a solid purpose. It will clarify the why as well as goal set properly for a real estate business. Then you build it according to the plan. Now think of each client as a brick that gets laid in intentionally and with the appropriate amount of mortar. This is your database. This is your referral business. This is a solid business that begins to support itself and then can withstand the storms of the real estate markets and the weathering challenges that come at us all the time, right? So if you listen to one of my earlier episodes called The Liftoff, I go over the airplane analogy. At the beginning of the business is where you have to have the throttle fully pushed forward. There's a lot of people that instinctively understand this, but I've noticed that five years down the road, they're still at full throttle mode and they haven't experienced liftoff. They're working hard, but using the wrong systems or working without a plan or they've not put in the foundation properly. And I was that person for a long time. Luckily, I have an awesome wife. She stuck with me, but I believe a lot of relationships can be damaged from building a business incorrectly like this. A lot of people work really hard out of emergency mode, but they do it in short sprints. And then as soon as they experience some success, they release the throttle and begin to enjoy the fruits of their labor too soon. Then they get into emergency mode again and the cycle continues. Liftoff never happens. I don't want this for you. The reason I'm doing this and I'm doing these podcasts and I've designed this course is to help others get clarity on one, developing the plans for your ultimate dream business. Number two, developing what needs to be done. This is the 4X formula and mastering the four facets. And then number three, what are the landmarks along the way? How is success defined by a 4X agent? But it's unavoidable that you have to be out of balance for a little while. Anybody that tells you different is not telling you the truth. How do you get and then maintain the momentum? Okay, so after liftoff, once the pilot gets the plane to 30,000 feet, he has to lay off the throttle or he's going to burn out the engine on the plane. There's less friction up that high and the plane seems to kind of propel itself. And this is where you need to get balance. This is where you need to get your business to. But if you keep going that hard, you're going to burn out, right? You're going to burn out the engine. That's no good to anybody. So if you know that you have to be totally out of balance for a while in order to get your life into balance eventually, then wouldn't it make sense to figure out how to shorten that time that you're out of balance so that you don't put unnecessary strain and stress on your business, your relationships, and your potential income? So the third point to gain balance is to have a plan and execute the plan. Set goals. Know your why. Do some work to establish where your starting point is where you are currently uncomfortable, and where you want to be. This is only the first destination, but it's a destination. What does liftoff mean to you? I refer to this as the moment that you get kind of out of survival mode to thrive mode. What is thrive to you? And I don't, I don't mean just one good year because the market was blowing up in your area. I mean a sustainable business that you are in control of that's organically growing and feeding itself. Then you begin to plug people in to take care of certain activities, create a little automation with a personal touch, schedule small moments in your days and weeks to implement your client touch programs intentionally, inspire people to refer business to you, constantly checking in with your clients to ensure that you're getting feedback, figure out 
what can be done for a small wage that achieves those things. And then you can kind of insert yourself after inserting a person in there to help you and then jump in once in a while uh, to keep kind of keep it fresh and warm. But the biggest part is understanding that you can schedule yourself, right? You're in control. You can use a cell phone to put a contract negotiation together on top of a ski hill or sitting on a beach chair, right? This is the new reality. So, so how do you leverage that? Number four, don't forget about your loved ones. Schedule them in too if you have to. So if you have a family, then scheduling in that time for those special events is really important. Your kids are only kids for a snapshot of time in their lives. And it's important to be there for those special moments. Resentment is the toughest human emotion to dissipate. Once resentment sets in and it starts to germinate and it festers, it's hard to erase. Anger and happiness are fleeting, but resentment is kind of under the surface and the people experiencing that emotion aren't even aware that it's happening. It's like a cancer that targets relationships. I've seen it a lot. So this is why it's so important to get the balance. Striking that balance is really important to save that seed from being planted. After all, what are you working so hard for anyway? What's the reason? And I hope that your why definitely includes something about them. (laughs) If not, then you're already out of balance before even starting. So think about this. When things go bad, it's even more time consuming. When marriages start to crumble, it's even more mentally draining. It's hard to focus. Other challenges come up when it comes to the kids and all that kind of stuff, right? The very thing that you neglected because you didn't think you had the time is now going to be consuming you, but it's going to be consuming you in a negative way. This is the balance of life, the balance of nature, the yin and the yang. Your family and loved ones are not distractions from your focus on your business. They are the reason that you're doing it. Does it make sense to neglect them in order to build the business for them? It doesn't make sense, right? So number five, here's how another way to combat that. Involve your loved ones in your goals so that they know why you're working so hard. In order to achieve a good work-life balance, it's important to involve those that are important in your lives. Share your goals with them. Share your why with them. Share the obstacles that you're working to overcome with them. Sometimes your spouse can see things that you don't. Their outer perspective can give you some really amazing insights if you let them in. And this is important because now your spouse will explain to the kids from the perspective of a cheerleader rather than a disappointed wife or husband. Like, how would you like them to be speaking to your children? Oh, I I guess your father's going to let us down again. He can't make it. Well, that's typical. Is this going on? Then the family's in trouble. And I'm sorry to state that so confidently. This is something that you need to fix and fix it soon. This is on you. Resentment is setting in and you're becoming the bad guy or gal in the family. Or how about this? No, honey, no, sorry, daddy can't make it today. But you're going to see him tonight when he gets home. He's working really hard for us and he really wishes he could be here. This is the case where goals are shared. The parent is positioning it in the child's mind that this is a unique circumstance. This isn't normal, but it's one of those uncontrollable ones for this specific time. Make every effort to make your loved ones a priority. Even if it's for a snippet of time, if it's in the middle of a workday, then do it, but then get back to work. You may need to push appointments into the evening or work on a Sunday in the afternoon to ensure that you make those events, but that's what you have to do. I've finalized negotiations on the sidelines of a rugby game many times. You do what you have to do. Get it done. Then get off the phone, watch the game. Then get back to it after the game. People can wait 30 minutes to an hour for you to return to things. I do this all the time. Very rarely is something that important that it can't wait until afterwards. I've I've explained to my clients a lot of times that I can't see them during that little short block of time during the daytime because of of a family event. And I've found that they actually respect that. They actually feel better about doing business with me because I'm just a regular person just like them. I coach soccer. I've helped uh, coach football and attended all the school events that I could. I bet I made about 90% of those. I have a great relationship with my family. My wife has always been my cheerleader. And that's because she's always knew the plan. I shared the dream with her all the time. But here's the other aspect. Number six, don't bring the challenges of the day into the home. Don't do it. 
I didn't bring home the baggage from my day. Once you share the dream, you can't come home every day and whine about your day. That's not fair. See the problem there? If I spend all this time and energy building the dream with my wife, and then I come home every day and whine and complain about the challenges I've been facing, and the, and the jerk clients that I have to deal with, or the jerk realtors that I have to deal with, what's, what's that due to the dream that I've helped build with my wife? It causes her belief in that dream to dissipate. Well, that's not good. That's bad. And to be honest, extremely selfish. When you're home, be home. Be engaged in them. Be with them physically and mentally. Everything should be about them. This is the reward that they get from you for waiting for you. Give it to them. Don't make it all about you. Make it all about them. Believe it or not, this is a huge stress reliever too. That's the benefit that you get to enjoy. And there's going to be times when you'll be spending less time with them. Well, if that's the case, make it count. Make it fun. Make it all about them. Give them yourself 100%. Don't make it all about you. I understand stress. I do. But your family doesn't deserve your stress. And as long as you've done everything you can about the stressful issue or challenge, then there's really no need to stress about it anymore for the rest of the day. Put it on your list to, to deal with tomorrow. Nail down all the action steps today so that your mind is clear. And then just decide that you're going to do everything that needs to be taken care of tomorrow. If nothing more can be done today, then push it aside mentally and enjoy your loved ones. Don't dump it on them. They don't need it. They're not going to solve it. They aren't going to do the action steps tomorrow for you to help. There's no benefit to dump this on your spouse or loved ones. So don't do it. Does that make sense? Number seven, involve them in the bigger business decisions. So this is where you can involve them. If there are larger business challenges that, that, that's going to affect the overall life plan, well, this is kind of different. You got to talk about it. Things like bringing on a business partner. I believe spouses should meet the partner. This is another type of marriage, honestly, and they deserve to know and have a say in who you're going to get involved with in this major life event. My wife has an amazing gut feeling about people, and there are many times that I should have involved her and listened to her opinion, and I didn't. And it would have saved me a lot of disappointment and a lot of heartache and frankly, a lot of money. And it's, it's something that you, you need to involve them in because they will point out things that you never thought of because you're consumed with the, with the thing. And they'll look at some other, other outer influences and, and they will come up with things that you never thought of. So it's really important to involve them. Changing offices. If you're thinking about changing an office, this is a major business decision. And sometimes they're a great sounding board to speak to about this decision. And it also affects the family dream a little bit, right? Life or business events, decisions, major purchases, things like that are definitely events that your spouse needs to be involved with. They need to know what's going on. If it's exciting, if it's bringing the plan forward, then this is something that you should share for certain, right? Discuss and evaluate. Talk about the pros and the cons. And then if it goes great, then you both get to share in the feeling of success together. But if it goes bad, well, guess what? They get to share in it too. You aren't necessarily the one to blame 100%. They were part of the decision. So now there's less chance of resentment building up, right? I don't think that I can possibly cover all the aspects of work-life balance in this episode. But my goal was to get you thinking about these things. Now, I think, I think you get the basic premise. Apply these principles and you're going to be great. When you have a cheerleader that you love in your corner, you will produce much better. You're going to be more creative because you're going to want to do more for them. You're, you're going to have more drive. You're going to have more motivation. It all works in concert together, right? The last thing you need is additional stress and what I refer to as home stress, right? To deal with the building years before liftoff are crucial to your success and you need to be able to focus like a laser during that time. When you work, work, work diligently and with absolute focus of energy and intention. If you waste a lot of time during the day and have a lot of coffee talks or bar talks and spend time on, time on things that don't produce results, then your loved ones absolutely have a right to be upset with you. Don't you agree? So don't sabotage your potential business success. Be true to what you plan out together. Be accountable to that. Be the best you that you can be for you for your business, but also for them. That's it for today. Thank you for listening once again. I appreciate you. To learn more about our free training where you can see if we're a good fit together to help you get to lift off, go to forexformula.com. Go out there and make a great day. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that last episode. 
Here's the reality that you may or may not know. The top 20% of real estate agents take home 80% of the money out there, while the bottom 80% are fighting over 20% of the scraps that are left. Do you have a desire to be in the top 20%? If you're working hard and not sustainably making six figures of income and beyond, the problem is not you, it's your system. I struggled for years until one day the light bulb came on and I figured out how to simplify the real estate business. If you want to learn my secrets that anyone can implement immediately that I still use every day that pays me multiple six figures every year, go to 4xformula.com right now. That's 4xformula.com. The number 4xformula.com.